the title is a bit misleading and perhaps a touch dramatic, but it is important and the ramifications are potentially significant. It starts in 1917. The food chemist James Curry discovered that a strain of mold called Aspergillus niger could produce large quantities of citric acid as a byproduct of breaking down sugars. He approached Pfizer in 1919, and the pharmaceutical company quickly saw the potential of commercially producing citric acid this way rather than obtaining it through citrus fruits. Although it would take a couple decades to maximize the conditions for the fungus, something ultimately solved by deep fermentation tanks. Aspergillus niger is a filamentous fungus named after an aspergillum, a type of holy water sprinkler due to the fungus's resemblance to it under the microscope. But this application of biotechnology has been in practice for a hundred years. Aspergillus niger produces nearly 99% of all manufactured citric acid, Citric acid biotechnology manufacturing is a multi-billion dollar industry. Citric acid is added to food and drinks, everything from juice, soda, jelly, bread, wine, candy, and for the storage of blood in the cosmetics industry as a buffer for pH adjustments, leather tanning, electroplating. Citric acid is one of the main preservatives used in foods. It also adds a distinct sour taste. A majority of the time when you see citric acid as an ingredient, it is the manufactured citric acid from a mutated, genetically modified strain of Aspergillus niger. The sugar base used is mainly genetically modified corn. None of this information has to be disclosed in any medicine, cosmetics, household, or food product. It's simply listed as citric acid. Citric acid was a food additive long before the FDA started to evaluate the safety of food additives which was in 1958 in the Food Additives Amendment. They excluded food additives in use prior to the amendment, which includes the manufactured citric acid. The FDA labeled citric acid as gross, generally recognized as safe, with no actual FDA evaluation performed simply because it did not demonstrate harm over its previous period of use. Aspergillus niger is a known allergen and it is called a black mold. There are many types of black mold. Most people are familiar with Chatarum, a common and deadly household mold. Aspergillus niger is opportunistic and can grow in almost any environment. Vegetation, soil, houses, really anywhere there is carbon, oxygen, and moisture. They can survive temperature ranges from 6 to 47 degrees Celsius, so about 40 to 115 degrees in Fahrenheit. They can live in pH ranges from 1.4 to 9.8. This fungus is also one of the spores found on the International Space Station and can survive high doses of X-ray, UV radiation, and cosmic radiation. While its mycotoxins are not considered the most harmful, even within the Aspergillus genus, it is a known allergen and has been documented to produce dangerous toxins on occasion. Most people breathe in some form of aspergillus spores every day, and infections can target lungs, sinuses, ears, the gut, and any break in the skin. It is considered mainly harmless unless in immunocompromised individuals, but we'll get to that more in a second. A point of clarification, citric acid is not vitamin C. Vitamin C is an essential nutrient that humans cannot produce themselves, as opposed to most mammals that can. Vitamin C must be obtained from something. Vitamin C is the same as ascorbic acid. Citric acid is closely related but lacks an oxygen molecule and is not essential to human health. Vitamin C is important for the immune system and production of collagen and is an antioxidant among many other important functions in the body. Vitamin C was taken off the required nutrient label by the FDA, citing that vitamin C deficiency is no longer an issue, arguing that today's society receives enough of it. But similar to citric acid, vitamin C is synthetically manufactured and added to foods. The reason being is that vitamin C is a delicate chemical. It is heat sensitive and easily breaks down, but it is highly important for fruit as it is a natural preservative. It protects it from spoilage microbes, similar to how we use it for the immune system. So food gets processed, its vitamin C is destroyed, and then it's re-added in the synthetic 
vitamin C is added to it, and citric acid is usually added to it as well. Vitamin C in its organic sources comes with necessary phytonutrients to absorb it. For example, iron pairs with vitamin C. While we may be ingesting enough vitamin C in our diets, we often lack the means of actually absorbing it. This, of course, will leave our immune systems without adequate fuel. Manufactured citric acid can contain contaminants from the black mold, which again is generally not harmful unless through repeated long-term exposure and with weakened immune systems, which we may have from microplastic pollutants, toxins, heavy metals, etc. The takeaway is that citric acid derived from Aspergillus niger was never properly evaluated. Its ubiquitous use in everyday products leaves us potentially exposed to a toxic black mold. This should be immediately studied. Furthermore, it is considered safe despite that there is not unanimous explanation for the biochemical basis of the process. That's in reference to the citric acid manufacturing from the Aspergillus niger. Mold and mycotoxins are rarely discussed in health, and mycology itself is still figuring out the many abilities of fungus. In addition, the long-term effects of citric acid itself has not been properly studied. Since it was mainly found in citrus fruits and not so widely ingested in every product. Finally, even with all that being said, my biggest cause for concern is this. And if there's even the slightest chance it can be true, then citric acid production should be reevaluated. Imagine hiring a hacker group to build your firewall or to add features to your website, and then expecting that there's no possibility of a Trojan horse or malware planted or that the hacker group can't easily break through its own firewall. That's what this citric acid sounds like to me. Mold is something we barely understand its effects. It's breathed in daily, can survive nearly any conditions, and can grow in humans. Its mycotoxins are harmful, especially over long-term exposure. Mold is smart. For alcohol, which is a yeast byproduct, even though we filter the yeast out, overconsumption of it can lead to yeast overgrowth in the body. They know the chemicals that they're working with. There's no reason mold and citric acid shouldn't at the very least be tested to see if that's the case. That's all I'm advocating for. Mold is clever, durable, and everywhere. Even if it's not a major cause of disease, constant inflammatory response to the spores or possible contaminants in the citric acid means an easily avoidable health concern is just bombarding us over our lifetimes. Thanks for watching.